students you have learned what is electromagnetic spectrum it is the arrangement of different radiations in the increasing order of wavelength or frequency now we learn what happens to the matter when electromagnetic radiations interact when electromagnetic radiations fall on matter you find that the molecules and atoms interact with it and it results in different types of spectrum the atoms and molecules in matter absorb radiation and get excited so excited state is a unstable state wherein the atoms and molecules are highly energized these energized atoms or molecules try to come back by releasing the energy so we have two types of spectrum that is produced it can be either emission spectrum or absorption spectrum unlike the solar radiations or electromagnetic radiations if you check the spectrum of atoms they are always discontinuous you find that the atoms will produce what is called line spectrum or band spectrum there are two types of atomic spectra that is produced it can be either emission spectra or adsorption spectra we will learn the different types in this video when atoms absorb energy it jumps to the higher levels of energy and then it the atom is said to be in the excited state it is a highly energized state where the atoms become unstable so the unstable atoms try to come back by releasing energy then it is called emission spectrum atomic spectra can be of two types emission spectrum and absorption spectrum this is the experimental setup for emission spectrum the experimental setup consists of a sample and a spectroscope the spectroscope essentially consists of a prism and a photographic plate so the sample to be checked is for, kept in front of the spectroscope so the sample is in the excited state the meaning you find that the sample is irradiated with either white light or heat the radiations from the excited sample is directed onto the prism and the uh, emergent radiations are recorded on a photographic plate this type of spectrum that is obtained is known as emission spectrum emission spectrum consists of bright colored lines separated by dark space on the other hand we have the second type which is known as the absorption spectrum the experimental setup consists of the sample kept in front of a spectroscope the spectroscope you know it consists of a prism and a photographic plate unlike the emission spectrum here the sample is kept in front of a source of white light and the sample is irradiated continuously with that each sample is having a unique property of absorbing certain type of wavelength as a result you find that the absorbed wavelength will be missing in the white light so the rest of the light that is transmitted is falling on the prism and it gets deviated or it gets deflected to collect the emergent rays so you find that transmitted radiations are allowed to fall on the spectroscope and the emergent rays are being recorded here absorption spectrum consists of dark lines and their colors are opposite to that of a continuous spectrum you find the line spectrum of each and every molecule or atoms are unique in nature they 
You find that absorption spectrum is also a line spectrum and it is a photographic negative of an emission spectrum. That is when absorption spectrum and emission spectrum of a particular sample is recorded and merged together we get white light. Spectrum of atoms gives an evidence of the energy levels being quantized. What do you understand by quantization of energy? Quantization of energy means each and every energy level around the nucleus will have fixed energies or discrete values. And so this helps in understanding the Bohr model of atom better. So, dual nature of matter along with quantization of enthalpy, quantization of energy helps to understand the Bohr model of atom better. The next model of atom was proposed by the Danish scientist named Niels Bohr in the year 1913. He proposed that the atom is made up of three different fundamental particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. Protons are present in the nucleus, so is the neutrons. Together they form the nucleons and they are placed in the central core of the atom called the nucleus. Surrounding the nucleus we find the electrons are placed in different concentric circles. The circular path which are fi having fixed radius around the nucleus they were called as orbits. or shells or stationary states or energy levels. Associated with each orbit, we find that there is definite energy. So you find that the smallest orbit will be the one which is closest to the nucleus and as it moves further the size of the orbit keeps on increasing. We shall now discuss the various postulates of Bohr model of atom. Orbits are concentric circular paths around the nucleus. Then, as long as the electrons move in a particular orbital, the energy remains the same. You find that energy of an electron does not change with time. Electron in the case shell will be having minimum energy and you find that as it moves further away from the nucleus, the size of the orbit keeps on increasing. The electrons present in those orbits will have more energy compared to the first one. And the difference in energy can be calculated using the formula E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu. Another important postulate is that only those orbits are permissible in which the electron will have an angular moment which is an integral multiple of H by 2 pi. So what is meant by angular momentum? You know that momentum is mass into velocity that is mv. Now if it is performing a circular motion you find that it will have angular momentum and it is calculated by using the formula mvr. 
is equal to n h by 2 pi where n stands for the energy level it starts from 1 2 3 etc these are discrete values and h stands for the planck's constant value 6.626 into 10 power minus 34 joule second bohr also gave satisfactory explanation for the size of the orbit that is the Bohr radius was calculated using the formula Rn is equal to 0.529 n square by Z Armstrong. Armstrong, 1 Armstrong is equal to 10 power minus 10 meters. And he was also able to give an expression for finding out the velocity as well as kinetic energy of the electron. So velocity of an electron moving in a Bohr orbit is given by Vn is equal to 2.19 into 10 power 8 Z by N centimeter per second. And the kinetic energy of the electron in the Bohr orbit is given by the formula En is equal equal to negative 1312 z square by n square kilojoules per mole energy change happening during a transition that is when an electron jumps from a lower level to a higher level it is found to absorb certain amount of energy likewise when an electron is jumping from a higher level to a lower level it is releasing energy and the energy change that is happening during a transition or a change is given by delta E is equal to 2.18 into 10 power minus 18 into 1 by ni square minus 1 by nf square where ni stands for the energy of the orbit which is in which the electron was placed initially and what is the final state of the electron the energy level of the electron in the or different orbit is given by nf these are the main postulates of Bohr model of atom.